Episode 219, Blair's New Dress. Make it a dress and have it looser, Blair said. Stephen tilted his head and thought about it. I'll cut open both sides by the waist, then use a thin strap to tie around the stomach. Blair imagined it for a moment, then her expression cracked. Damn, it's really revealing. Don't fool around, Blair refused. Stephen took the measurements, then gave additional room for Blair to grow bigger. He then gently slit with his nails, cutting the snakeskin that was indestructible by both water and fire. He coiled on the floor and carefully sewed the dress while curling his tail around her. Blair had nothing to do, so she stared as he made the clothing. Seeing that he was about to sew the straps, she started to make things difficult again. I want lace on the side. Sew laces on the straps using thin thread. Humph, who asked you to scare me? Stephen looked at her, seemingly baffled. What are laces like? How do I stitch them? Uh, Blair gave it some thought. I think, sew the edges tightly with thread to make folds. Are you sure you want it like that? Stephen's gaze landed on her shoulder's fair skin. He raised his hand and touched it gently. Blair found it itchy and tried to wriggle and dodge. I'm worried that your skin might get hurt from it, Stephen said. They had been mates for two years, and he now had a deep understanding of how fragile females were. Blair gave it some thought, then quickly shook her head. Forget it. Although Stephen's snakeskin was thin, it was heavy, as if it had been embellished with gold thread. It was better for the shoulder straps that were used to hold up the weight to be flatter. However, Blair was unhappy that she didn't manage to make things difficult for him. Stephen smiled dotingly and tugged off a strand of hair, then started sewing on the straps. Hey, I don't want laces anymore. Blair wanted to stop him, but the latter moved his tail and sent her next to Roger. Roger was elated. He hugged Blair, not letting her go. I'll comb your hair for you. Her waist-length long hair was troublesome to comb. Blair was happy to have someone comb it. She'd been planning to cut it off. They had brought back her bag from the City of Beastmen the other time, so she didn't end up doing it as she now had a comb. Blair rolled her eyes at Stephen, then quietly laid in Roger's embrace while rummaging through her bag. Her things were still around, but had traces of aging. She even managed to find her phone. It couldn't start anymore. The most surprising thing was that the mirror was still intact. She looked at her reflection. Her face still looked like that of a young girl, but she had less baby fat on her cheeks, and her face had become slimmer. It must be the effect of green crystals. Nadia also looked young despite her old age. Blair threw an unconscious glance in Stephen's direction, and to her surprise... She noticed that the lace that Stephen was holding on to looked very good, suppressing the happiness in her heart. Blair pretended as if she didn't care and said, It's not bad. Do it all over the hems of the dress, then. Stephen smiled and looked at her, saying, All right. Blair felt a little bad bullying Stephen when he was being so good-tempered. After seeing the completed product... Blair couldn't continue with the act anymore. She held on to her stomach and walked over, staring at the clothing, unable to turn her eyes away. The straps on the dress weren't the thin straps with folds that she saw at the beginning, but a flat strap, two fingers wide. The straps with folds were sewn onto both sides of the wide straps, making them into laces on both sides. It wasn't just the shoulder straps. There were also suitable laces on the chest area and the hems of the dress. The part below the chest area was drawn in to have a body-hugging effect. 
However, it wouldn't affect her big stomach at all. If she wasn't in the world of beastmen, Blair would definitely have thought that this dress was bought from a fashion retail shop. It was simple but exquisite and would definitely be a hit in the market. You like it? Blair forgot to conceal her emotions and nodded in a daze. Yeah. She only came back to her senses after saying that, and a faint flush appeared on her face. Stephen stood up. I'll help you change into it. No need, I'll do it myself, Blair said happily. She turned around and took off her tube top, then put on the dress. Blair was having doubts when the clothing suddenly became loose and covered her body. Hmm? Stephen walked up behind her and tugged at something. The material below her chest tightened. So he didn't secure the snakeskin strap inside the clothing, and it was possible to tie a knot at the back. Why didn't you tell me this earlier? Blair complained and rubbed her chest across the fabric, gasping from the pain. Stephen said innocently, I said that I'd help you to put it on, but you didn't want that. Blair pouted. She lowered her head to take a look at the clothing, and her mood got better. The clothing was tailored well, was a good fit, and felt high quality. It felt like it was something really expensive. I didn't ask for this part to be tightened in. How did you think of that? Blair asked. Stephen stroked her chest. He spoke with no lust in his voice. This is something I thought long ago. Hmm? Blair turned her head to look at him curiously. Every time I saw you pulling down your straps to breastfeed the children, half of your body would be exposed. Therefore, I've been thinking of using something to bind this part. Seems like the effect isn't bad, Stephen said. Blair's pink face flushed red. Stephen was too serious when saying this. If it was Roger instead, Blair would have beaten him up long ago for thinking those things. After putting on the clothing, she was unwilling to take it off anymore and admired it for a while. After seeing that Roger hadn't come back even after so long, she walked over to the tree hole's entrance to take a look. However, she didn't catch sight of the leopard. Roger only came back roughly half an hour later. He brought with him a blade of grass, then crouched on the ground without a word and pounded it using the stone mortar. Blair cast quite a few glances at him. Roar! The leopard cubs woke up at the same time and flipped onto their backs, stretching lazily with all fours up in the air. If only one cub did this, it would just be normal cuteness. But when three cubs did it at the same time, it was an incredibly adorable sight. Blair sputtered with laughter. Let's bring the kids out to play. Oh, right. Rex found a suitable place and is building a house right now. I wonder how it's going. Let's go and take a look. There's a large plot of empty land over there, suitable for the cubs to practice their sprinting. It was rare for Blair to be in such a good mood, not wanting to dampen her spirits. Roger and Stephen set off immediately. This was the hottest time of the year. Even with the shading from the trees, it didn't block out the invasion of the scorching temperatures. They walked into the empty plot of land Rex chose to build a house upon, where the blazing sun shone directly upon, and the grass appeared dull and lifeless. But because there weren't any trees to block out the wind, they could feel a breeze which felt particularly comfortable as it blew upon their bodies. Howl! Now that they had an unobstructed view, the cubs excitedly broke into a sprint on the grassy plains. Blair gazed at the plants in the surroundings and shouted worriedly, Be careful! Roger raised his head and let out an angry roar, making the plants in the vicinity shake noisily and causing countless animals to flee frantically. You don't have to worry now, said Roger. With their daddy backing them up, 
The cubs dashed into the trembling bushes. Blair said, They really make me worry. Let's quickly go in. Once they were exposed underneath the sun, Blair felt an aching sensation from her skin. The sun seemed even more vicious here than in the city of Beastmen. Stephen covered her body with his hair and dashed to the pile of rocks at the speed of lightning. The foundation had been set, and it was laid with even rocks, occupying an area of about 500 square meters. The walls of the first floor had also been built. Hiding under the chilling stone wall and taking in the breeze, it felt really relaxing. Just then, the cubs came back with a small-sized prey, one after the other. Roar! Third place, the short-winged bird he caught at Blair's feet. The short-winged bird lurched forward half a meter before third held it between his jaws and brought it back to her. Heart melting, Blair stroked his head and said, Is this food for Mommy? Meow! Third nodded. Jealous, eldest and second also went over to their mommy and wanted to rub against her legs. Second had caught a short-winged bird as well. But the prey eldest brought back was a large, spiky ball resembling a porcupine. And now, eldest's mouth had been pricked by the spikes from holding the prey between his jaws. Without waiting for eldest to bring the prey over to rub against Blair, Roger kicked the cub aside. Go to the side and eat by yourselves. Blair cast a grateful look at him and said, Mommy's not hungry. You three can eat the prey yourselves. Roar. The three cubs aggrievedly crouched in a row in front of her and started to enjoy their prey. 